Hey everyone, welcome back to our lab course. In this week's lab, we'll explore the vibration on a string. Since we can't do it in an actual lab, we'll be using a simulation. A standing wave is the superposition of two traveling waves. As in this simulation, we have a green wave that travels from left to right and a blue wave that travels from right to left. When you pick a certain point, like the one here, and add the green and the blue wave, you end up with a so-called standing wave. You see, it's not going anywhere, but there are places where we have maximum motion. These are called antinodes, and there are places where nothing moves at all. Those places are called nodes. This is our simulation. I'm including the link on YouTube below and you will also find it in the lab manual. So we have a string and we can move or wiggle its left end by various means. We can do it manually, we can set it to periodically oscillate or we can trigger a single pulse. For the first experiment, We'll leave it at the pulse setting. We keep the right end of the string fixed. We'll change that later. We also want to turn on the timer and set the rulers. With the rulers, which you can move around, you can measure the length of the string and you can also, with the vertical ruler, measure the amplitude of any waves. Down here we have a few sliders. The first one sets the amplitude of our pulse. We'll leave that at 0.75 centimeters. We'll change the pulse width to the shortest possible one, 0.2 seconds. We'll reduce damping to none. We leave the string extension at high. Next we press the pause button and we arm the timer. So now when I start a pulse, you see what's happening. It's traveling back and forth and because we didn't set any damping, this pulse will travel back and forth forever. As soon as I introduce some damping, it will die down. Now with the timer, we can measure the round trip time of the pulse. Let's reset everything to the start conditions. No damping, arm the timer. Now we have two options. We can measure several round trips, like five or 10, and then divide the measure time by that number, five or 10. Or we can switch on slow motion. And as you might guess, this slows down the motion. And so we can measure the time for one round trip. Briefly crank up the damping to make that pulse disappear. And from the round trip time and the known length between the pulse generator and the fixed end, you can then calculate the wave speed. We can also replace the fixed end with a loose end and it's your task to find out what happens in that case. Another thing we can do is to change the tension in the string. And again, your job is to find out what the impact is, uh, how it, for example, affects the round trip time and the wave speed. Okay, let's move on to the standing wave part of the simulation. We don't need the timer anymore. We make sure that we're back at the fixed end. We set the tension back to high. And we change the pulse driver to an oscillating driver. But we reduce the amplitude to something very small, 0.03 centimeters or so. 
This basically ensures that the left end is almost fixed. Now we use the damping to bring the motion back to zero. We also set the motion speed back to normal. And when we set the damping slider back to none, we see, yes, there is some wiggling motion, but not much of an amplitude. The reason is that our frequency is pretty far away from a resonance frequency. It will be your job to first calculate those resonance frequencies based on the known wave speed and uh, the distance between the driver and the fixed end, and then verify your calculation by changing the frequency with the slider and see what happens. You will need some patience. In most cases, you need to watch at least 20 to 30 oscillations before you can determine whether this frequency is near resonance or not. Also, keep in mind that you want to change the frequency in very small steps only, 0.01 or 0.02 hertz. And when you hit the right frequency, you get a very large amplitude as shown here. I'm blurring out the frequency because, as I said, that's your job to find. Finally, we change the boundary condition from a fixed end to a loose end. Note that this will slightly change the distance between the driver and the loose end, so you will have to remeasure that distance. Now, because of the different boundary condition, the frequencies at which we hit a resonance are different. With the loose end, you see in this example, we have one, two, three nodes. We also have one, two, three anti-nodes. For more details, have a look at the lab manual.